Today, I'm joined by Ishikawa Toshimitsu Sensei, a Shakuhachi teacher, player, and performer who has studied for many, many years under Yokoyama Katsuya and also under other Kinkoryu players. He won many awards in his career as a Shakuhachi performer, and with the support of the Agency of Cultural Affairs of Japan and the Japan Foundation, he traveled the world, going to such countries like India, the USA, Australia, Poland, Belgium, Austria, Singapore, Germany, and Lithuania. He released a series of CDs called Ikan Kanei 1, 2, and 3, a collection of Honkyoku, or the Zen repertoire pieces, which really drew me to learn more from him. I met Shikawa Sensei in 2006, doing my first trip to Japan, and I got hooked. And we met many, many times after that in his teaching place in Osaka, in the Kansai area of Japan. Shikawa Sensei also released a CD of his brother, who is a Koto player, called Ishikawa Bros, and another CD with the works of the composer Fukudarando. He's a very active performer and hosts uh, concerts in the Kansai area of Japan and also is a permanent faculty member of KSK. Hope you enjoy our time today to explore more the life and legacy of Yoko Yamakatsuya. Enjoy. All right, so Ishikawa Sensei, it's a pleasure Hi. to have you here with me today. And uh, I'd, li I'd like to start asking you, uh, going back in time a little bit, about when when you started learning the shakuhachi. So could you tell us what attracted you to the shakuhachi and when did you start to learn the instrument?で、all right, Sensei. So it was very interesting that you could make a sound from the get go. So that makes you really happy and also interested in keep learning the Shakuhachi. But my next question is about how did you become Yokoyama Sensei student? So, under what circumstances did you meet Yokoyama Sensei and started to learn from him? え、まあ、あの、all right, so that's very interesting. So your first impressions of Yokoyama was also that he was very approachable, but at the same time you enjoyed the sound. But can you tell me, I mean, how did you become his student? I mean, did you have to go to him and introduce yourself or somebody helped you with that process? え、ですね。で、それをどうしようかと思って、どうクリアしようかと思って、で、
Yeah, I got it. So he he's already going, I think, to, to my next question here, which was about his impressions about Yokoyama sound, right? So that's very interesting. So originally he started because of the the, 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 two, the, the two teachers, Tajima Sensei and Yokoyama Sensei. He had to kind of ask to study just one part of the Yokoyama repertoire, the, which is the Fukuda Rando repertoire. Uh, that's very interesting. So for me, uh, when I first heard Yokoyama Sensei sound, of course, not live during recordings, I was mesmerized by his sound. I mean, the impressions for me was were very strong. So what, was that the same for him, like comparing to other Shakuhachi styles? Was that like the same thing for him when he heard Yokoyama sound and Yokoyama style? It just was something very different, very unique in his perspective? So, yes. Mm. だから、あの、昨日8月で、8年経った時に横山先生の名前を聞いたんですけど、このようにこんな音があるのかともう本当になんていうか、どぎもを抜かれたっていうのが正直なところですね。だからまああの、田島先生ももちろんまああの上手な
楽に出した音は所詮楽にしか聞こえないんだっていう、まあ、これはあの人の心にはそ,そこまでは届かないんだ刺さらないんだというようなことをよく言われてましたけどそれにやっぱり通じるようなことがあると思いますね。That's very interesting. I like that. I like that a lot, Sensei. That makes a lot of sense. So it's not only to make it easy for yourself, but also to work through the, the music, but also work with the instrument to produce something beautiful to the audience as well, right? So, this is the first thing I want to do. I think it's a lot of work. I think it's a lot of work. I think it's a lot of work. I think it's a lot これがねあの、活躍案なんですね、横山先生からあの私にって言ってあのくださったやつなんですけど、とても難しいんです、いまだにちゃんだに思うように吹けないんですけど、やっぱりまあ今、これじゃないとだめなんですね。いや、だって、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、I think that's actually very fascinating in the sense of、uh, not only learning but also performing. So, speaking about、uh, studying with Yokoyama Sensei,、uh, I know that for many teachers in Japan, and I have experienced that in Japan in Shikawa Sensei, sometimes Shakuhachi lessons can be very formal, right? So, like, say, but I also heard that Yokoyama Sensei was very well known to have、uh, a focused style of teaching, but at the same time be very light and funny. So, could you, could you just share a little bit more about how you experienced y o k o y a m a s e n s e i s style of teaching and how that influenced your own style of teaching as well? y o k o y a m a s e n s e i は常にユーモアを忘れない方で、結構はもうそういう、まあ、雰囲気でした。あそしてあの、これは結構特徴的なレッスンなんですけど、レッスンを受けてる人の演奏をみんなで聞いてでそれに対して自分はどう思うかどうす向上するにはどうすればいいかというようなこうコメントを要求されたんですねで人の演奏を聞いて自分の感想をこう話すためにはあ毎回こう真剣に聞く必要がありますそしてそれに対してこう自分はどう考えるかどう吹きたいかということを話すということは音やその尺八の音や曲に対する感覚を大変向上させることにつながるというふうに思います。とてもまあユニークなレッスンでした。So in some kind of way, I mean, y o k o m a s e n s e i s teaching style was also、uh, very much about putting the student on the spot, right? Like in the sense of not only getting what the student wanted to get from y o k o m a s e n s e i but also being on the spot in the sense that other students are also listening and critiquing. And also providing some type of、uh, some level of feedback. And that creates a whole different environment for the student to learn in terms of like learning a piece and how, learning how to perform a piece, right? So, so this is the lesson that I've been able to do. So, I've been able to do it. 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 やっぱりこう着目数、着眼点というかね、気がつくところがやっぱり違うんですね。でそういうのをみんなでこう共有して高めていくというようなスタイルでもありました。How that influenced your own style of teaching, Shikawa Sensei? Do you do something similar with your students nowadays or not? うんそうですねあの。今は大体そのマンツーマンで、他の人は。あのまあ聞くことが少ないんで、えー、そういうスタイルじゃなくて、えー、どっちかというとまあ僕は自分の演奏まだまだ自分がまあ演奏できるんで演奏をとにかく聞いてもらってでそれをまあ,あの参考にしてもらうというのはまあ完全にまだしろというわけじゃないんですけど、えー、参考にしてもらうようにしてます。それもねあの62歳の時にドイツの,あの舞台で公演中にあの脳梗塞で倒れられたんですけどその前の横山先生がまだご自身で吹かれる時はどちらかというと天才肌というか、えー、もう言葉はいらないから一緒に吹いてそれを取りなさいというようなスタイルだったんです。で
、えー、倒れられてもう療養されてからはあの自分で吹けないんで言葉によるレッスンとそういう、えー、コメント力を要求するようなレッスンちょっとあの内容が変わっていったんですけどそれはどちらも素晴らしいものでした。Yeah, thank you for that. That's also very, very interesting in terms of teaching style. And I'm sorry just to ask one more question about teaching style because I'm just curious. Because Ich Kassen say, you just mentioned that it's hard to teach nowadays in Yokoyama Sensei's old way of like, you know, having more students and playing for each other and critiquing each other. What do you think that changed? Or what do you think that happens nowadays? It's kind of hard to create the same atmosphere. That you yourself experienced as a Yokoyama student back in the day? Narrow Hito no Hoga, Amari, Hokano Hito no Enso lesson, Kitakunaisi, the Kito Hoshkunai, you know, and Anka Armitai. Nanjigara Nanjima de Yatemasio to Utemo, more daitai more Kasanara na Yona Zikani Minasan Koralevunde. まあ、その辺はやっぱりちょっと変わってきてますね。うん、OK、Yep、I totally understand that。There is definitely a loss。So、I just want to go back in time a little bit here。Again about looking at Yokoyama's、um, uh, teacher、Watazumi Doso。Right? So、as we all know、uh,、Watazumi Doso Roshi was a big influence in Yokoyama's style of playing。So、I'm just wondering in your perspective、how。How big of an influence was Watazumi in Yokoyama's, in defining Yokoyama's performing style, playing style? But how big is Watazumi for you in terms of an influence of,、uh, for you as a performer and as a, as a teacher yourself, Ishikawa Sensei? So, I'm going to say, 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 えー、横山先生は渡住先生から伝授された尺八本曲をこうなんていうか舞台芸術へと昇華させたんだと思います。えー、渡住先生の録音も時折聞きますがあとてもじゃないですけどまでできませんしまたしようとも,も考えないです。ただまあすごいテクニックであることは間違いありません。And how big is Watazumi for you, Ishikawa Sensei? So, how big, is,、uh, how big of an influence is it for you nowadays? Do you still go back, for example, to Watazumi's recordings and do you listen, or do you focus mainly on listening to Yokoyama Sensei as a reference for your own playing? Ah, so this is the book. So, Yokoyama Katsuya no Shakuashi Honkyo Ko Denshio Suru to Noga, it's one of my main shoto at all. So, Kyojiu to you, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, だからほとんどあの横山先生のものしかまあ見たりビデオをよく見るんですけど、うん、聞いたりしないですね。Yeah, I understand that, and that's、uh, that's a, that's a fantastic way of like keeping Yokoyama Sensei's legacy alive and Watazumi's legacy alive as well. And I'm just and I just asked that question because I remember Sensei the times that I studied with you, I have been studying only one piece. From Watazumi,、uh, which is the n a n a d a n t r u n s u g o m o i that you taught me quite, quite a few times. But I also remember you telling me that you went back to Watazumi's original recording of this piece, you transcribed the, the music and created your own notation of this piece. And、uh, you also gave me the original recording from Watazumi. So I, I also feel that in some kind of way, you, you go back to Watazumi as a source. For, for a few of those pieces, right? あの渡辺先生の吹いた、まあ、鶴の巣ごもり七段鶴の巣ごもりですねあれはあの横山先生はあ,のおもしあんなの面白くないよって言ってあの手をつけられなかったんですねで,でもあれを聞いたらあのやっぱりすごいんでこれはやっぱり吹きたいなと思ってでまあ吹いてた。でそれはあの又真先生があの楽譜に起こしたレコードから楽譜に起こしたやつをあの作られててで横浜に又真先生のところに習いに行って教えてもらってでそれでまあ自分の録音にも入れたというようなところですそれをまああのマテウスさんはブラジルその時ブラジルからあの大阪に習いに来られたというようなことですね。<笑>面白いな<笑> so that's very interesting, Sensei. Thank you. 
Uh, and speaking a little bit more about Watazumi, have you ever had a chance to meet Watazumi in person or to watch Watazumi playing live, Ishikawa Sensei? Yeah, no, I was just curious because I heard that some people met him in person, some of your Kwama students met him in person, and that his impressions was that, that he was a little bit eccentric in some kind of way. So I was just wanted to I just wanted to check your perceptions as well. I understand. All right, that, that makes that makes a lot of sense too, Sensei. Thank you for sharing your, your perspective there. And and going back to Yokoyama Sensei's Hon Kyoku, especially the Hon Kyoku repertoire that he learned from Watazumi Sensei. I mean, what in your perception, because you're a professional player, I don't know that you play with all these different um players from different schools, Shakuhachi, Koto, Shamisen, you do a lot of you know ensemble playing as well. But if you look at Ryokoyama's style of Honkyoko playing, but also his style of Kudarando pieces and playing those pieces, what do you think that differentiates Yokoyama style compared to other schools like Tozan and Kinko, for example? あの、渡津美先生からの伝承とあとあの、ご自身のお父さんランポ先生とその、またお父さん、高尊っていう茶川一名家の人とその静岡からの伝承の2つのルートがあるとま考えられるんですね。え、渡津美先生からの伝承は
けど金庫流も東南流もその流をこう大きくしていくためにそれぞれの,その自分のスタイルという形をあの重視したと思うんです。で片隅同窓はそうじゃなくてその曲ごとのキャラクターを生かしたというかそのまま。まあ、老けたからそ,そこもやっぱりまあ天才的なところがあったんじゃないかというふうに思いますね。それがやっぱり曲ごとにいろんなこう、まあ、味わいが違ってて面白いというところにつながるんじゃないでしょうか。Thank you. Thank you so much for mentioning that because that's exactly how I feel. I mean, I, I mentioned that、uh, in some other interviews that I'm making that for me, what really differentiates y o k o y a m a sound is this level of freedom. You know, there's a lot of freedom he's playing. Thank you. And then、uh, coming back to your time with Yokoyama Sensei,、uh, Ishikawa Sensei. So I, I, I'm assuming you, you had time to be with Yokoyama Sensei for many, many, many different opportunities, right? So do you have any, any, any stories, maybe one or two stories that you could share with us that are memorable stories uh, uh, of that time with Yokoyama Sensei that might help us shine a light on his personality a little bit more? 一緒にあのまあ、演奏でこう印象的に残ってるのは、えー、私の第2回のリサイタルですね1995年に出演していただいて「えー、春水」と「和田摘みの色この宮を」を、まあ、共演させていただいたんですで、えー、舞台上で一番驚いたのはこう春水の時なんですけどもう体が緩みきってるんですねで緩めきっていて、えー、シャコパッシにも息を入れた途端にもう向こう側の壁に音が飛んでいくみたいなことでしたね。でもう一つは、えー、これはあの、まあ、日本でカバン持ちっていうあの荷物持ちで、えー、横山先生の舞台に一緒についていた時なんですけどあの800席のホールで、えー、アーカンで、えー、タムケを。されて吹かれたんですで最初の「おお」っていうのを一音そこだけ吹いたんですけどあのもうその一音でホールを包み込んでしまってでもう客席がもう水を打ったようになったんですでこれはすごいなと思ってでまあ,あの一曲吹かれて、えー、帰ってこられた時に、まあ、お話をしたら、えー、その。客席のその会場の気が一つになってこっちにあの感じる感じられることがあるというようなことはあのおっしゃったんですけどそれはなかなか続かないねと難しいなというふうなことをおっしゃってました。So i s h i k a w a s e n s e i what you were saying is that there was some, something special about Yokoyama's sensei sound but also his way of performing. And, and my next question here is connected to that in the sense that I know that some Yokoyama students they, they get a sense of what's important in terms of Yokoyama Shakuhachi philosophy. So, if you could define Yokoyama Sensei's philosophy around the Shakuhachi, how you would describe the essence of his approach to the instrument? サムライのその気合いの間に通じるものだというようなことをおっしゃってたんですね。Well, I never, I never heard that before. That's, that's very, very interesting. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And in that sense,、uh, Ishikawa Sensei, what are some of the key learnings that you got from your grandma Sensei that you keep close to your heart? Things that you never forget. That you keep reminding yourself、uh, just to keep you know,、um, uh, honing your own playing? So, the first one is that I have to say 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 that I have to So, 
というふうに言われましたでそれもその言葉も常に私の心の中にあります、ね、Well thank you for that as well because I think it really、uh, makes a good segue to my next question which is about the relationship between Shakurachi and Zen right because what you're saying is about transcending good and bad So there is some, some kind of like a spiritual element there. And, and, and the reason I'm I just making that connection is because many Westerners、uh, tend to come to learn to Shakuhachi and they want to learn to Shakuhachi because there is this connection between Shakuhachi and Zen. But for you, Sensei, I'm, I'm very much curious about your point of view on, on this topic. Do you ever think about that? You know, or do you use the shakuhachi as a meditation tool or just as a musical instrument? Does that、um, connection between shakuhachi and Zen have any appeal to you, or you don't think about that at all? Well, I think shakuhachi and Zen are very important to think about it. So, I t h i n でまあ、あの瞑想することも、うん、ありますけれども、それはまあ自分自身と向き合う時間ですね。So for him, there is a very clear like separation between like the music, Shakuhachi as the musical instrument and meditation as his own,、uh, let's say, practice. So there is no kind of correlation there.、うん、そうですねあの。楽器として、えー、やってますけどその、やっぱりその古典本曲がなければ、僕はここまでその尺八を続けては来なかったんじゃないかというふうに思ってます。I understand. I understand that that makes a lot of sense. And, and one more question about your approach to those two different, I'll say, points of connection there to the shakuhachi, the musical and the spiritual. By playing the Honkyoko Sensei and also playing a lot of, I'll say, new music, modern music on the shakuhachi, have you ever felt that by Doing your best, you after like playing a piece, maybe you actually felt differently inside and like your inner state after playing a Honkyoko piece. I mean, did you achieve my, my question? Is more about have you ever experienced that you achieved a different place inside yourself, a different feeling when you finish playing a Honkyoko piece the way that you wanted to play? And is that different when you do the same thing with、uh, like a modern piece, for example? I don't know. 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 ね、Again, thank you very much for allowing me to, to、uh, explore your own perceptions of the instrument and the music. I appreciate that very much. So, my last question here for you, Ishikawa Sensei, is、thank、about you. I mean, you have been playing Shakuhachi for many decades.、Um, so, what keeps you going? What keeps you inspired to keep playing? And what would you like to see happening to the Yokoyama style of playing? In the 21st century? Yokoyama Sensei's Oto Enso is, of course, not able to do it in the same way. I think that the people who are in the same way are in the same way. I think that the people who are in the same way are in the same way. I think that the people who are in the same way are in the same way. I think that the people who are in the same way are in the same way. こう人を肩にはめるということは全くしませんされませんでしたので、えー、その形は変わってもそのスピリット精神が伝えられてまあ伝わっていけばいいのではないかというふうに考えています。Well, I think that's a very good way of closing our interview today, Ishikawa Sensei. So thank you very much for all of your、uh, points of view.、Uh, thank you for sharing a little bit more about yourself. In your Shakuhachi journey. I think this was a very pleasant interview that has allowed me and our viewers as well to get a little bit more perspective on, on Yokoyama style of playing, but, Yokoyama, but also new perspective on Yokoyama sensei as a person, as a teacher as well. So thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate it. 
And I just want to say that um, I have experienced learning from you quite a few times. And it always has been an enjoyable experience. And I really appreciate and I want to thank you for your gen generosity, not only today in terms of your time, but also your, gener your generosity when you, when you welcome me in Japan for, for teaching and helping me in so many different ways. So thank you so much. I hope to see you soon. Very, uh, uh, I hope to see you soon again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. また会える日を楽しみにしています。はい。で、えっと、最後に、まあ、メッセージなんですけど、あの、尺八はとても難しいんですけど、まあ、こんなに面白い楽器もなかなかないんじゃないかというふうに思います。えー、ぜひ、皆さんの、えー、それぞれの好きな形で、えー、尺八を吹いていただければと思います。で、えー、横山本局の、えー、テクニックの向上を目指す人は、ぜひこの石川メソッドの DVD をご覧ください。イングリッシュバージョンもあります。サブタイトルですね。All right. Well, thank you again, Sensei. I really appreciate it. Thanks for your time and see you. See everyone next time. Thank you. <音楽>